guys, this is Edna again with Square Eye Photography and I'm going to teach you how to change the background of your newborn shoots or portrait shoots or whatever to a different color in less than 10 seconds. There are some parameters where this works well and some where it doesn't, but I'm going to teach you that today. So here I have the photograph up of a baby and in this photograph I have a color that is very different from the skin of the baby. So there's really nice contrast difference and color difference between the baby and the background. And I love this shoot, but let's say I wanted to have a purple or blue background or I just wanted to change it. There's a super easy way in Photoshop to do that. So you're going to go to your layers tab. You can get to that by going to window and layers in case you don't have it up already. Although layers is probably something you should always 100% of the time have up on your uh, Photoshop desktop. You're going to go here to this, this thing that looks like a little half um, moon. It's a circle that's half um, filled. That is your new fill or adjustment layers button here. You're going to click on that and you're going to go to hue saturation and then right here the on the properties tab you're going to click on this little hand right here there's a little hand with a couple little arrows you're going to see now that there's an eyedropper you're going to click on the background and you're going to play with your hue check this out isn't that awesome so now i can change this to anything that I want. So here is a nice blue background or a nice brown background, pink background, um, whatever you want. Let's say I'm going to do something in the bluish tones. So right around there. You can also mess with the saturation. Let's say you want a dusty blue, almost gray or bright blue. I mean, I don't recommend going like this and you start having all kinds of weird issues, but lightness and darkness also very, very easy to do. So that is an easy way to change the color of your backdrop. And that's it. Literally, that's all you have to do. I love this background. It's super cute. Let's see if I want it brighter or softer, or darker pink. I like that. That's really nice and you're practically done. You can close up your properties panel right there. You can uh, merge all of these together by pressing Control, Shift, E. Again, that's Control, Shift, and E, and that merges all of your layers, your visible layers, and then you just save it. So I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save that as C3. That's my third copy of this image. And done, we'll close that up. Now I'm going to show you another one right here. So on this one, same thing, you go right here to your adjustments layer. You go to hue and saturation. You click on that background and you play with the hue. Now let's say that you are in this situation where you want to go purple. You see how that's kind of purple? Let's say, I really love this purple color. This is exactly what I wanted. But you see how right here, I'm gonna zoom in for you guys, how you're having these really weird like edges and it's not quite working correctly. In this case, you would have to go in and traditionally mask your subject. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna get out of the properties here. I'm gonna remove that hue and saturation um, layer and I'm going to go in. I'm going to mask the baby myself. So I go right up here to my lasso tool. Actually, let's do quick selection right here under your selection tool. You're going to go to quick selection and you are going to select. I normally select the baby. I don't select the background and then I invert it because it's just easier this way, I think. So I'm going to select the baby. And see how it's just selecting everything like it just knows. Now, if you're adding more, you're going to press shift. If you're subtracting, you're going to press alt. See shift. There you go. There you go. That's perfect. It's doing a 
great job, but we're going to definitely refine this a little bit more. Everything looks good here. We missed a little bit. See that? We missed a little bit here, so you're going to press Alt. There you go. Alt right over here. And I'm always pressing the space bar to move around when I'm zoomed in. It's a great thing for you guys to know. You press space and then you can move your image around. And then here I'm going to press shift again and I'm going to grab that. And we are missing a lot of little hairs here, but I'm going to show you how to get all of those. I'm going to press alt, remove all of that extra. And then we're going to go, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. We're going to go to select and refine edge. That's alt control R, but we're going to press refine edge. And here's the baby. We're going to press smart radius and kind of let it figure out where it needs to select. And you can kind of see the differences as you play with it. So whatever you feel is the right amount. I think that looks pretty good. I'm also going to smooth it out just a little bit. I'm going to feather it by 1.5, 1.5 or 2. You can play with it and figure out what needs to be feathered with you. And then I'm going to shift the edge down just a tad, like maybe minus 2 or 3. And that usually shrinks it just a little bit. I mean, I'm talking by pixels so that you don't get any of, the, of your background inside of your image. And now I am going to go in and brush in where I think there are little hairs. So you see that? There are little hairs here. We're brushing those in now so that it's going to understand that there's something there. Perfect. That's beautiful. Now I'm going to output this. Normally I output this with a layer mask, but in this case we're going to output this just as a selection, just like that. I'm going to press OK. And now the baby is selected, but we want to select the outside, the background, right? So we're going to press Shift, Control, I, Shift, Control, I. And now instead of the baby being selected, we've inverted it so that the background is selected. You see how these marching ants are all over the edges right here? That's how you know your background is selected and not your baby. Because if you're zoomed in, you can't tell the difference. Watch, Shift, Control, I, nothing changes. Shift, Control, I. You have to go and zoom out and make sure that the marching ants are around the outside of your image. And then you know that now your selection is just the background image. Now, don't worry, I know this is a little bit higher um, technical skill than maybe a lot of you are used to, but I'm going to show you now how to change the color of the background really easily. You just have to remember a couple of things. So now we can go in and we can make a solid color mask. And you see how now because this, the baby was deselected and the background was selected, now we have a new mask and it's a solid color mask. So I'm going to go in and let's say I want to do a purple mask. I'm just going to pick a solid color here that I kind of like. I'm going to press OK. And we're going to go in and we're going to fill this. Instead of it being on normal here, we're going to add color to it. So now you don't get all those little weird edges, but I still don't think this is perfect. I don't think this is where I want it to be. So I want to add another layer mask for, let's say, hue and saturation or something else. So I want to copy this mask. So I'm going to press Control and click on that selection again. Do you see how I did that? I'm going to undo it. So if you press Control and you click on your mask, you're going to copy that mask all over again. And you can put that mask now back on your background. So the little marching ants now are on the background, not on the mask. And then you can add another layer mask. So let's say we're going to do hue and saturation. Now we can go through and start playing with, oh, sorry guys. You have to move this above your color fill. Otherwise, it doesn't know what you're trying to do. So 
Now, you see that? We can change that color. We can change the saturation. We can change the lightness or darkness. We can do whatever we want to do here. So if I wanted to do a little purple one right around there, then I can do that. I want less saturation, less brightness. Yeah, I kind of like that right there. I think that's really pretty. Now let's look at how it looked before. So that's the before and that's the after. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more. There we go. That's really pretty. I like that. So now all you have to do is just save it. So you press shift control E and we're going to save that. So you can go to file, save as, shift control S, and that'll be my fourth copy of that. There you go. And now I'm going to teach you how this in this particular scenario because everything is gray and everything like the baby is kind of in that neutralish weird tone right there like if you used the hue and saturation on this let's see i'm going to press here and i'm going to press here watch what happens so this isn't a good candidate for it this would be a good candidate for masking so we're going to close that and that's not going to work and this is a good sample of one that will work because there's a very bright color that's very different than the baby skin. So again, we go right here and we go to hue, to hue saturation, click on the little hand right there and it's a pretty good sample of something that you can do. And then let's say I don't want that, uh, that much saturation. Look at how beautiful. All of a sudden, we have a completely different image that's just gorgeous. Look at that. I love that. How different is that? Look at the before and after. Before and after. Now be aware that because this is yellow on her little headband, that's changing also. So if you needed that not to change, you can always mask that and bring it back in or however you wanted to do it. It's pretty easy. So I'll show you. So this is a mask right here. You see that right here? This is a mask. So if I wanted to bring the yellow back, I wouldn't want to bring the yellow back in because this, this now matches the background. It looks better. But if you did, you'd go here to your softest brush. Make sure you're on the softest brush right here. No hardness. Um, and uh, let's say we can start with like a 25 or 30% opacity. And you could just brush that back in just like that see? and as much or as little as you want so because I'm at a 30% opacity I can keep adding more and more and more of that but again I wouldn't do that I really loved the original non saturated that we got so I can go back and press X on your keyboard see how that changes X white and black white and black so I want white again. I just put that back to where it was. And I love this. Let's save that. Oh, I'm going to save that as a JPEG. There we go. So here, this is also not a good candidate. And I'm going to show you. I already have the hue and saturation up right here. See? Not a good candidate to change the background. I clicked on this. Not a good candidate to change the background. But this also is really good for when you want to change just a single color in an image. So for instance, let's say that I have this adorable little beanie again, right? And the mom is like, I really don't like that pink because uh, it's a boy or whatever. I'm not trying to be, you know, gender, gender uh, specific here. But let's say you have a client that wants these colors changed. You can use it the same way. So you can go to hue saturation and you can click on that pink and you can change just that pink. Oh, 
No, nope, it won't do it on pink, but let's try red because pink is too close to the baby skin. See, oh, maybe that one won't work either. So you have to, you have to do it in colors that are very different from the baby skin. So pinks and reds probably wouldn't work because then you've got, you've, you're changing the baby's um, skin color. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can and can't do. So this blue would probably be perfect. So let's click on the blue. There you go. See that? It would, it's a perfect candidate for it. It has to be something that is different from the baby skin. Otherwise you can go in and mask it and change the color manually. And I've taught you how to do that. So here you go, guys. This gives you an idea of how to change your color quickly when and when and when you cannot do it. If you guys have any questions at all, please just leave a comment. Do me a favor and leave a comment anyways. It always helps. I think for some reason, if people leave comments, YouTube puts the videos up higher in the search engines because people are commenting. So it always would be awesome if you guys would leave a comment, let me know what you think. Also, if there's anything that you guys want to know how to do, just let me know. I have been a photographer for over 20 years. I'm heading on almost 25 years. I started really young <laughs> and, um, I do portraits. I do weddings. I do tons of weddings. I do more weddings than I ever do newborns. Um, I do indoor, I do hotel photography, I do food photography, I do family portraits, sexy fashion photos. I do absolutely everything. I've been in this industry a long time. So there, if there's anything at all that you guys want to know, let me know. I'm happy to make a vi video for what you guys want to see. All right, guys, thanks a lot and have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and um, have a good one, guys.